Futility by Wilfred Owen Move him into the sun Gently its touch awoke him once, at home, whispering of fields half sung. Always it woke him, even in France, until this morning and this snow. If anything might rouse him now, the kind old sun will know. Think how it wakes the seeds, woke once the clays of a cold star. Our limbs, so dear a cheek, our sides full nerved, still warm, too hard to stir. Was it for this the clay grew tall? Oh, what made fatuous sunbeams toil to break earth's sleep at all? High Flight, an airman's ecstasy. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up. Up the long, delirious, burning blue I've topped the wind-swept heights with easy grace, where never lark or ever eagle flew. And while with silent, lifting mind I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools, if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea-green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five-pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy, oh, pussy, my love, what a beautiful pussy you are, you are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried, but what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood a piggywig stood with a ring at the end of his nose, his nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mints and slices of quince which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand on the edge of the sand they danced by the light of the moon, the moon, the moon. They dance by the light of the moon. Snake by D. H. Lawrence A snake came to my water trough on a hot, hot day, and I in pyjamas for the heat to drink there. In the deep, strange-scented shade of the great dark carob tree, I came down the steps with my pitcher and must wait, 
must stand and wait, for there he was at the trough before me. He reached down from a fissure in the earth wall in the gloom and trailed his yellow-brown slackness soft-bellied down over the edge of the stone trough and rested his throat upon the stone bottom, and where the water had dripped from the tap in a small clearness, he sipped with his straight mouth, slowly drank through his straight gums into his slack long body, silently. Someone was before me at my water trough, and I like a second comer, waiting. He lifted his head from his drinking, as cattle do, and looked at me vaguely, as drinking cattle do, and flickered his two-forked tongue from his lips, and mused a moment, and stooped and drank a little more. Being earth-brown, earth-golden from the burning bowels of the earth on the day of Sicilian July, with Etna smoking, the voice of my education said to me, He must be killed, for in Sicily the black black snakes are innocent, the gold are venomous. And voices in me said, If you were a man, you would take a stick and break him now and finish him off. But must I confess how I liked him, how glad I was he had come like a guest in quiet to drink at my water trough and depart peaceful, pacified and thankless into the burning bowels of this earth? Was it cowardice that I dared not kill him? Was it perversity that I longed to talk to him? Was it humility to feel so honoured? I felt so honoured. And yet those voices, if you were not afraid, you would kill him. And truly I was afraid, I was most afraid. But even so, honoured still more that he should seek my hospitality from out the dark door of the secret earth. He drank enough and lifted his head dreamily as one who has drunken, and flickered his tongue like a forked knight on the air, so black, seeming to lick his lips, and looked around like a god unseeing into the air, and slowly turned his head, and slowly, very slowly, as if thrice a dream, proceeded to draw his slow length curving round and climb again the broken bank of my wall fence. And as he put his head into that dreadful hole, and as he slowly drew up, snake easing his shoulders, and entered farther, a sort of horror, a sort of protest against his withdrawing into that horrid black hole, deliberately going into the blackness, and slowly drawing himself after, overcame me now his back was turned. I looked round, I put down my picture, I picked up a clumsy log and threw it at the water trough with a clatter. I think it did not hit him, but suddenly that part of him that was left behind convulsed in an undignified haste, writhed like lightning, and was gone into the black hole, the earth-lipped fissure in the wall front, at which, in the intense still noon, I stared with fascination. And immediately I regretted it. I thought, how paltry, how vulgar, what a mean act! I despised myself and the voices of my accursed human education, and I thought of the albatross, and I wished he would come back, my snake, for he seemed to me again like a king, like a king in exile, uncrowned in the underworld, now due to be crowned again. And so I missed my chance with one of the lords of life, and I have something to expiate, a pettiness. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, And often is his gold complexion dimmed, And every fair from fair sometime declines, By chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. The Example by W. H. Davies From Songs of Joy, 1911 Here's an example from a butterfly that on a rough, hard rock happy can lie, friendless and all alone on this unsweetened stone. 
Now let my bed be hard, no care take I. I'll make my joy like this small butterfly, whose happy heart has power to make a stone a flower. The Soldier by Rupert Brooke If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think, this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter learnt of friends, and gentleness in hearts at peace under an English heaven. The Tiger by William Blake Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire, what the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder, and what art, could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand, and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Songs of Travel and Other Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson The Vagabond Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. Give the jolly heaven above, and the byway nigh me. Bed in the bush with stars to see, bread I dip in the river. There's the life for a man like me, there's the life for ever. Let the blow fall soon or late, let what will be o'er me. Give the face of earth around, and the road before me. Wealth I seek not hope nor love nor a friend to know me. All I seek, the heaven above, and the road below me. Or let autumn fall on me, where afield I linger, silencing the bird on tree, biting the blue finger. White as meal the frosty field, warm the fireside haven. Not to autumn will I yield, not to winter even. Let the blow fall soon or late, let what will be o'er me. Give the face of earth around, and the road before me. Wealth I ask not, hope nor love, nor a friend to know me. All I ask, the heaven above, and the road below me. The Wind Hover by Gerard Manley Hopkins To Christ our Lord I caught this morning morning's minion, Kingdom of daylight dauphin, Dapple dawn drawn falcon, in his riding of the rolling level underneath him steady air, and striding high there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy, then off, off forth on swing, as a skate's heel sweeps smooth on a bow bend, the hurl and gliding rebuff the big wind. My heart in hiding stirred for a bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing, Brute beauty and valour and act, Oh, air, pride, plume, here buckle, And the fire that breaks from thee then, A billion times told lovelier, More dangerous, O oh, my chevalier. No wonder of it, Sheer plod makes plough down silly and shine, And blue bleak embers, Ah, my dear, fall, gall themselves, And gash gold vermilion. If you'd like to learn more about this poem, visit the British Library at British.com. If you like this video, 
click the like button, subscribe and leave a comment.